Good morning. I know who's awake now. Well, I want to do something just a little different. Can I tell us who you're pastoring and what church you're pastoring now? Because I am pastoring Rock Pike Baptist Church in Forest, Virginia. If you know where the New London area is at, that's where I'm at. I've been there since uh, April. And uh, God has blessed us uh, the last three years or so. They've been having anywhere from 8 to 12 people on any given Sunday morning. The first week I was there, we had 37. First week of July, we got the numbers up to 107. We're hovering right around 80 on every, every given Sunday morning. So that's a little bit more vocal right here, please. I'm having a real hard time hearing you. Thank you. Well, I just want to tell you a little bit about myself for those who don't know who I am. My name is John Sines Jr. I was born in Bedford, Virginia. And when I was a little boy, my mom and dad used to take me to a Salem to a place up there called Lakeside. Anybody ever remember Lakeside? Yeah. And I used to go up there and watch I used to go up there and watch guys like Conway Twitty and Hank Williams Jr. and, and Merle Haggard and George Jones come to the little pavilion there and play country music. And when I was a little boy, I wanted to be George Jones. I'd hear this on the radio and I just fell in love with it. I'd hear like, they stop loving her. desire for country music and I gravitated to it and as I got a little bit older I heard this on the radio and I really love this I heard I've been loud <laughs> Mexico, one was heading for vacation, or 
politicians and crap in the street, and not matter in hell. I ain't gonna take it over. Well, you know what's wrong with the world today? People have gone put their Bibles away. They're living by the law of jungle, by the law of man. So I did the, the Earnhardt record in 2001, and I'm going to play it for you. And uh, I'll tell you more about it when I'm done. I was watching the Daytona 500 on February 18, 2001. Watched the fatal wreck that killed Dale Earnhardt. I wrote the song the next day, put my album in stores nationwide. Helped me be on the road with a lot of big names in country music, opened a lot of doors for me. And it's my tribute to Dale Earnhardt called Black Number 3. I hope you enjoy the acoustic version of it. driver's dream takes the right combination between man and machine when they fire up their engines and they finally go green the one they fear most is the black number three says first, it's appointed when the man wants to die. He doesn't care whether you're running the Daytona 500, if you're in the World Trade Center on September 11th, 
you're on one of the planes, or you just so happen to be sitting in a little country church somewhere in Glasgow, Virginia, listening to some southern boy tell you, you need Jesus. You will keep your appointment with God. You won't get out of it. Oh, you don't have to worry when your time comes. If you're not where you're supposed to be, death will find you. You will keep your appointment. So it's been able to help me tell the story, the greatest story ever told. There's not a country song that's ever been recorded that tells a greater story than Christ leaving heaven in all its glory to pay a sin debt that you owe and I owe, and but redeems man with a holy and perfect God. Not a greater story ever told. And country music. My love for country music and my love for Christ and my love for NASCAR has all God has put in a nice little package in order to help me tell the great story. See, I don't know what you're dealing with tonight. We all got stuff. We all dealing with something. In the book of Acts, in Acts 16, Paul and Silas is in jail. They're in prison. And they sing in praises to God in the midnight hour. And the Bible says that heaven, the, that the earth shook and the doors to the prisons were opened and Paul and Silas was free to go. And the jailer who was keeping charge over Paul and Silas and the other prisoners, he knew that with all these prisoners gone, the powers that be were going to end up killing him. And so he takes out his dagger and he's going to kill himself. And Paul and Silas house, look, don't do yourself no harm. We're all here. We're all accounted for. And the jailer was a little puzzled by that. He recognized there was something different because they could have ran and they didn't. See, Paul and Silas knew that God had placed them in that prison for a reason. Just like whatever your prison is today, some of you are facing a prison. Maybe it's alcoholism. Maybe it's an addiction. Maybe you're stuck in forgiveness. Maybe you haven't offered forgiveness. Maybe you're in a job situation. Or maybe your marriage is in shambles. Whatever it may be, some of us have stuff that we're dealing with and we feel that as though it is a prison to us. You continue to be faithful to God and God is going to show up and do what, what He does best and that is He's going to be glorified because of your faithfulness. I wrote this song a couple years ago. I hope that you enjoyed it. It's called Sing in the Midnight Hour. You might be okay, might be on the mountain top, but that will change just when there's a valley up ahead someday. I think that you're all alone, no one cares for you. Feel like no one hears your cry, it's not exactly true. There's a master wants to pull you through When it's dark and gray and clouds roll across the sky Lift up your voice and rejoice Lift it high and sing it loud Pain is greater than 
you won't be When it's dark and rain and clouds roll across the sky Lift up your voice and rejoice Lift it high Sing it loud Sing it proud Sing it when the world tells you there's no way out Oh, 
pretty good tonight. I think you can do it a little bit better, all right? Most of y'all are doing all right, but I got a few of y'all in here look like you've been baptized in pickle juice. <laughs> So we're going to sing this again, all right? And listen, listen. I'm going to sing it until everybody is smiling. So the quicker we smile, the quicker we go home, all right? When we are... say you're a Christian. I can say I'm a, I'm a Dallas Cowboy fan, but I have to like the team and pull for the team. I can't be a Redskin fan and pull for the Cowboys. That's a conflict of interest. Listen, are you a Christian tonight? Are you a Christ follower? If you are, you're a soldier in this, in this spiritual battle we're in. And if you're not a Christ follower, then you're wearing a uniform in subordinate to the commander in chief. I want to ask you tonight, are you a Christ follower and dedicated in the army for the Lord fighting this spiritual battle? If you are, would you simply right where you're at, raise your hand and say, right where you're at, your heart to God's heart, say, God, thank you for allowing me to fight in the battle. I'm not perfect, I'm not a perfect soldier, but thank you for allowing me to be in the fight. Are you a soldier tonight? Praise God right where you're at. Listen, are you tonight? You're in a spiritual battle, whether you know it or not. I don't particularly care for golf. That don't mean it exists. That don't mean it does not exist. Golf is very much alive and well. And I can ignore it all over too, but that doesn't mean it's not there. There's a spiritual war that you're fighting tonight. And if you're not on God's side, and you're taking a neutral stand, and you're already helping the enemy. But there'd be one here tonight to say, I know God, but I'm not fully committed to Him. I don't have on the uniform, and I'm not, I don't have the boot camp training I need. And I want to get things right with God tonight. I've strayed away from Him, and I want to reconcile with Him tonight. Would there be one? Would you just look your hand up right where you're at, if there's one? Would there be one? Is there one here among us tonight who's never trusted Christ as Savior? You've never invited Him into your heart, and you want to do that tonight. Wouldn't there be one? If you don't, would you just simply raise your hand? I'm not going to come get you. I'm not going to call on you. I just want to pray with you. Would there be one here tonight that doesn't know our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? Father, you've seen these hands. More importantly, you've seen these hearts. We pray, God, you just move in the way that only you can. Thank you for allowing us to be in your house. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for dying for us. We ask you to help us to be faithful until you call us home. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. And all God's children say, Amen. Amen. Thank you for your time tonight, Brother Cliff.